Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to find the Norton equivalent between terminals A and B of this circuit. And this is a little more involved than what we've had before because now we have a, a constant 5 volt source. Uh, but we also have a voltage controlled voltage source. The value of this voltage source is 3 times V where V is defined to be the voltage across this 25 ohm resistor. Uh, we also have a current controlled current source. The value of this current source is 20 times I, where I is defined to be the current flowing through that 2K resistor, 2 kilo ohm resistor. So uh, the other thing that's funky is we've done problems like this in you know, past problems, but you kind of have this stuff going on over here, and you have this stuff going on over here, and you have one single line connecting the two things together. And I remember back when I learned circuits the first time, that kind of thing confused me, just seeing kind of like two circuits with just connected like a line. Like, what does that mean? Well, the first thing you need to realize when you see, you know, anything like this with a single line connecting like two parts of a circuit is there's never any current flowing between between these two parts here. There's never any current in here. And when you think about it, there can't be. Because if any current flows out of this circuit in, over here, then there would be nowhere for it to come back, you know? This is called circuit theory. That means there has to be a circuit or a circle, right? If there's a, a single wire connecting two circuits like this, current cannot flow here to here because it has no way to come back. And likewise, current can never flow here to here because there would be no return path either. So you say, why do we do this? Well, this, this is basically connected together because we're trying to connect the voltage, uh, the ground, so to speak, on this side to make it the same voltage as what's on this side over here. So you might have, you know, I don't know, just making this up on the fly, but you may have a telephone circuit for a cell phone. And in that circuit, you might have an amplifier for the speaker, right? And you might have, uh, you know, some amplifier for the transmitter, you know, for the, for the cell phone signal itself. And then you might have, you know, uh, some display electronics that drives the screen. And you may have some electronics that, that for the keyboard, you know, so when you press the buttons on the keyboard. You have all these little circuits that are all kind of inside of the case, and they're all doing different functions, but since they're all driven by the same battery and you want them to all coexist, you really want the, the voltage, the, the ground, so to speak, for each one of those circuits to have the same voltage on the bottom side of the circuit. So you can tie them together, right? And if you do that, then you're guaranteeing that this circuit, the bottom of it is going to be at the same potential as this, the bottom of this circuit over here, and it prevents large voltage drops from appearing between the different circuits, right? You would want this circuit over here doing its own thing at some voltage level way up here, and then some circuit over here doing something else, because if the voltages between the two circuits get to be too different, you can have arcing inside, right? You can have little, little sh electricity zaps between the two parts of the circuit that destroy things. So if you tie them together, even though there's no current flowing, you're bringing the voltage of the bottom of these circuits to be the same place, the same plane. So everything is measured relative to the same ground. That's what, that's what a ground is, right? All right, so that's what this really means, okay? So you can kind of ignore this little branch from the point of view of mesh currents or node voltages. There's nothing flowing in it. It just serves to ground both of these two parts of the circuit to the same potential, to the same voltage. So having said that, we want to find the Norton equivalent from A to B. So just like we've always done, first we want to find the Thevenin equivalent. And that's going to be the open circuit voltage. That's the Thevenin equivalent voltage. So let's find that first. Uh, and in order to pull that off, uh, let's go ahead and define uh, our meshes. Now we have a nice mesh here, so I'm going to call this I sub 1. And we have a nice mesh here, so I'm going to call